Hi. This week my sermon has the title, Keep Looking. I pray this message will encourage you. So welcome. Don't let your vision of who God is be obscured by what you're going through or have been through. Something very small can block out something much bigger. We often block out the sun with our hands, don't we? Don't block out what God wants to do by focusing too much on little disappointments and distractions. Social media is a huge distraction. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Well, thanks for watching. Don't get stuck there. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Liking, liking, liking. Posting, posting, posting. Commenting, commenting, commenting. Don't let it cloud your vision. Open your eyes. We're looking at 1 Kings chapter 19. The beginning of that chapter, if you want to open that. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Bathsheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was a bucket of KFC. Oh, sorry, no, no. Some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. Who knew angels could cook? Hmm. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up, ate and drank. Strengthened by the food, he travelled forty days and forty nights until he reached the Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. Elijah, the great prophet, who called down fire and killed all the prophets of Baal, who spoke and miraculous things happened, is running for his life and is now scared of Jezebel who wants to get him. Friends, choose this day who you will serve, God or Baal. They made the wrong choice. Fire fell and they were put to death. Rejoice in the Lord. Say it again. Rejoice in the Lord always. Say it again. Rejoice in the Lord Don't be blinded by circumstances. God is at work. Keep looking. Say it again. God is good. God is with me. God is for me. Say it again. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Say it again. Say it again. He is the bread of life. Say it again. He is the way maker and miracle worker. Say it again. Let us rejoice in the Lord. So Elijah is fearful. Because basically Jezebel has said, hey, I want you dead. If Satan can block your vision, block your way by something small, then he wins. Verse 3 tells us he was afraid and so he ran. All she could do was threaten him. Don't allow something small to block out something bigger. 
God's calling right now is bigger than any crisis. Trust me, read your Bible. Why would I let something small distract me and disappoint me? I can get through it. I can get there. Because I know from Psalm 121, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. What about you? Come on, there is something bigger. There is something greater. There is something more on the other side. The enemy may have sent a storm to disrupt our peace, to disrupt our joy. Friends, in this season, be aware, be well informed, but don't be ruled by fear and, oh, well, I heard this the other day, you know. Don't make entertainment out of misery. Some of us are more comfortable in a place of fear than in a place of faith. Elijah was used to running and hiding. It was his default. Friend, don't make it yours. Oh, it's easy nowadays to crank up Facebook and open YouTube and watch this message and watch that church and look at that cool thing and watch that video and watch another cat video and another one. But friends, God is calling us back together. God is saying soon. We all need community and a sense of connection face to face. To be his gathered church. To gather as his people. Even though we've been his scattered people, soon once again we'll be able to gather in our places of worship. God always makes a way. He goes above and beyond. Keep looking. Remember when Jesus fed the 5,000? That was just the men. There were women and children as well. And everyone had plenty to eat. And there were leftovers for another day. But it all started with a few, a few fish and some bread. A mum had packed her son a lunch. A small beginning, but an amazing outcome. What have you got to put in Jesus' hands. A little bit of time, a little bit of praise, a few finances, a little bit of energy, a little bit of joy, an old laptop and some dodgy Wi-Fi, but hey, you're hooked in, you're logged in, you've zoomed in, you're watching, you're listening, you're sharing with your church family. Elijah thought, that he was outnumbered, and it was over, but it was not. God is doing a recalibration. Elijah hears a, a gentle whisper, it's the Lord. And in 1 Kings 19 verse 13, we read, When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant. I'm the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came. And go to the desert of Damascus. Here we go. Here's the bit. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and all whose mouths have not kissed him. There we go. You let fear and doubt creep in, Elijah. But the Lord Almighty was on task and had everything under control. Yes, you can run Yes, you can get all depressed and want to die. But I have not forgotten you. Look and see what I have done. Look and see what I will do. 
God, open our eyes. Open our eyes. Help us to see your hand at work. Help us, Lord, to lift up our eyes above the disappointments, above the distractions, above the hardship. Help us to lift our eyes and see. Help us, Lord. Help us to lift our eyes and ears. The noise of our current environment. May we not be distracted. May we see and may we hear from you, Lord God. When we open our eyes, ask God to show us. Show us God. He will reveal what is already there. Because he has gone ahead and he has made a way. We just didn't see it because we didn't know how to look with our eyes of faith. Look and see. In Ephesians chapter 1, 18 and 19, we read this. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. God, show me your perspective. Faith is a lens that I look through, not a lever I pull or a button I push to make God act in a certain way. Don't block out what God wants to do by focusing too much on little disappointments and distractions. Don't let your vision of who God is be obscured, but keep looking. May God bless you today. Amen.